Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it speculative frenzy because that's exactly what's going on in this market right now. And it's uh, pretty evident in terms of what's been happening in the NASDAQ, uh, uh, over, especially over the last week. And I talked about the NASDAQ last week in last week's video, the NASDAQ and Apple. So if you haven't watched that, check it out. But when you think about the speculative frenzy, this tweet by Sentiment Trader, he just published this this morning, Perfect example of what's going on in here. Small trader call call buys to open. So what we're talking about is how much money has been spent by small traders, 10 contracts or less, to take open positions, which means establishing a brand new bullish position. But this is a 20-year period. And this is what's going on right now this, this year. This is crazy. And he's talking about the, the value in a month, they've gambled nearly $40 billion on stocks. And it's just amazing uh, what's going on. And uh, in, in addition to this, here is a tweet that I saw by Mohammed el Rainian, And actually, this is related to beartraps.com, uh, beartrapsreport.com. So you ought to check it out. They had a really, really interesting blog post over there. They published this on Wednesday, September 2nd. They were talking about the top 20 highest VIX readings. We had some unusual activity where the VIX was going up when the S&P 500 was hitting a new all-time high. Well, here's the top 20 VIX readings when the S&P 500 hit a new all-time high. Three of those top 20 occurred in the last seven days prior to September, on September 2nd and prior to September 2nd. Three of the 20, the other 17, 1999 to 2000. So pretty crazy activity in terms of what's going on right now. But speaking of the VIX, VIX, let's take a look at the VIX and see what happened this last week. Okay, on Monday, the VIX popped up. Pretty strong move right up to this trend line. Then it kind of stalled out. Tuesday started to break it a little bit on Wednesday. Look at the explosion on Thursday, you know, with that big drop in the market. And then we kind of reverse back down on Friday. Well, this is looking eerily like back over here on June 11th, the last time we had that big drop, and we'll go back and we'll look at the Dow Industrials in just a minute. June 11th and June 12th right here, okay? Look at the big move up, just like our big move up, and then they got a reversal candle, just like right here. Now, what am I doing with this big, uh, darker trend line right here? What I'm showing is the divergence in the fact that we've punched to new all-time highs in the market, S&P, NASDAQ, etc. But the VIX has not gone down and taken out any kind of lows or even gone down to the, the prior lows that occurred back up here at the high. So we had a pretty significant divergence going on, you know, over a you know, much wider uh, multi-month period. But I think this is a pretty interesting aspect of what's going on. We've broken this trend line, but you can see we've broken trend lines before and then we just kind of pull back. So we'll see what kind of follow through do we get? So let's dive in and take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now the Dow was down 159 points on Friday following the 808 drop that occurred on Thursday. So here we are, two consecutive closes below that blue line, the 10-day moving average, exponential moving average. So we'll see whether or not we get some follow through or do we get legs underneath it? Does all of a sudden support come in like what could happen back here in June? Now, June, we got a little bit of a rally. Then we pulled back down and retested that low, then started rallying off of that. Let's take a look at the weekly view. Uh, for the week, the Dow was down 520 points. Now, this dotted line, this is the Fibonacci level. This is the latest, the highest Fibonacci level that we're at, 28,657. It's really interesting how when you look back over the 90 years, last 90 years, since uh, you know, including 1929, how Fibonacci levels have come in and have really, they've not been like super strong resistance, but they've been points where the market has had a tendency to kind of top out and, and maybe it goes a little bit above it and, you know, bounces around it for a while and then, but provides some kind of a resistance zone. And we'll see if that's going to be the case now. And I did uh, create a blog post about it. If you go over to my website at johenches.net, 
and check out the blog post. It's not the four most recent, but it's you know within the last few months and just go to the blog page and check it out where I talked about that history of Fibonacci levels uh, you know, and, and the impact that they've had with key tops in the market over the last 90 years. While you're there, check out the membership also. All right, let's check out the Elliott Wave picture here on the Dow Industrials. Okay, this is my preferred count. Uh, you know, the S&P 500 has punched to a new all-time high. Of course, the NASDAQ has. I think the NASDAQ has possibly peaked out and maybe leading us down, but I don't think the S&P 500 is quite complete yet. And if the S&P continues to push, you know, a little bit higher in here, I think it's going to drag the Dow with it. We'll see. We'll see whether it's going to be like the 2000 top or not. In 2000, the S&P and the NASDAQ kept pushing to new highs while the Dow refused to do it. You know, they topped out in January of 2000. Well, I don't know. We, got, we're, we don't have very far to go to do that. This level right here is, well, let me just show you over here in this picture. 29,568 is the all-time high, intraday all-time high on the Dow Industrials. So we're very, very close. So this wave count, this bearish wave count that says we're in this big bear market that started with that high and it's one, two, and we're working our, you know, that we're getting ready to roll over. Well, this is still valid until we take out this high and we're really, really close. And that's why I just feel like uh, right now, I think we're going to keep trending. We'll see whether or not. I think this next week could be pretty key. Do we get legs underneath us in the Dow and the S&P and then turn and keep pushing a little bit higher? All right, so this is the picture. We've got the third wave, third Manu wave. I think we're working our way in here in five waves. This is key, though, in terms of this third wave. It needs to be five waves. It needs to be an impulsive structure. If this keeps coming back down here, and overlaps this wave one, then this wave pattern in here is invalidated. So that's very key to me in terms of what I'm watching, 27,071 on the Dow. Now let's take a look at my focus stock of the week, Microsoft. Okay, here's the long-term view of Microsoft in terms of a weekly chart, and this is from the low in March of 2009. I think here's the cycle waves. I think we had cycle wave one, sideways cycle wave two, very strong push up here for cycle wave three, and I think that's what we just topped out at. I think we had five uh, primary waves in here of cycle wave three. See how we got major divergence in here on this weekly chart on the RSI. Not only divergence between primary wave three and primary wave five, but even within the last few weeks of primary wave five, you can see the divergence that's showing up in here. Let me zoom in a little bit, okay? So I think that we're topping out. We definitely got, uh, you know, kind of a bearish candle here uh, for this last week, down $14.66. Now, where do I think this is going? Well, then you expect a fourth wave pullback. Now, don't judge me on timing. I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to be May of 2021. I'm just ballparking out here in terms of where I think it would go. Now, depth-wise, a pullback-wise, yeah, it could go back and retest this March low. It could go below that. Now, when I look at four versus three, I'm talking about four as a percent of the prior uh, cycle wave three. Here's a retracement, 23.6, pretty shallow. Here's your typical wave four that you'd look at, 38.2. So I'd say somewhere in this zone, it could be the bottom of the channel. I mean, we'll see. And uh, so right now, the one week at a time, one wave at a time, we're just looking for this to pull back. Uh, and uh, that's the picture on Microsoft. Okay, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it the thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, hit that little subscriber button. And you can hit that little bell. It'll give you notifications when I post a, a video. And uh, again, if you're uh, not uh, a member to my website, come on over and check out the website and check out the membership where we talk about this every day. Everyone, have a great rest of the weekend, a great holiday weekend here in the United States for Labor Day. Remember, the markets are closed on Monday.